If you want to win asylum, you've got to speak the language. No, I don't mean you have to speak English. So using an interpreter and speaking another language in your asylum interview is no problem at all. It's perfectly fine. What I mean is that you've got to be conversant in the language of U.S. asylum law. You see, there are certain terms that will be used at your interview, and if you don't understand them, well, you could suffer the consequences. In this video, I'm going to tell you about two words in particular that I've seen applicants struggle with, and I want you to really understand this so that this language issue won't trip you up and prevent you from winning your asylum case. I'm Brian Manning, and I used to be an asylum officer with the government. But now, as an asylum lawyer, well, I help immigrants all over the country to secure their future in America through asylum. Let me know in the comments if you've got an asylum case pending or maybe you're considering applying. And I'd especially like to hear from you if you've been waiting for an asylum interview with USCIS for multiple years. The way in which you talk about what has happened in your case matters greatly, both when I was an asylum officer with the government and now as an asylum lawyer, well, I've seen time and again winnable cases lost because the applicant doesn't know how to articulate their story or because there's confusion at the time of their interview over certain terms. You've got to understand what the officer is asking of you in order to give them the information that they're seeking and so that you can avoid problems that frequently emerge in an asylum interview. You see, the asylum officer is trying to apply a complex set of laws and policies in your case to assess whether you meet all of the asylum eligibility requirements. And there are certain key terms that they must work with. Words like persecution and phrases like internal relocation and firm resettlement are all what we call terms of art, meaning they have a very specific meaning in the asylum context. One that may be quite different than what you would think they mean. Now listen, as an asylum seeker, you're not expected to be a lawyer or an expert in all of this stuff. But I do think that you need to know about two words in particular, because I've seen these two terms cause a lot of problems. Now, the first problematic term is harm. The officer is going to ask you whether you've ever been harmed in your country, and if so, how many times? And they're going to ask you a lot of questions around this issue of harm. This is because the harm that you've endured is crucial for the officer in assessing whether you've been persecuted in your country. So what does this word harm mean? Well, it's defined as physical injury, especially that which is deliberately inflicted. But you see, asylum officers often have in mind a more expansive definition when using the word Harm. As where the definition we just read is focused on physical injury, well, asylum officers often understand harm to mean any touching of a person's body that is unwanted, irrespective of whether it causes injury. Let me give you an example of where this almost tripped up a client of mine recently. My client answered the question in the asylum application form about past harm with a no indicating that he had not been harmed in his country. And then he said the same thing at the interview when he was asked about past harm. The officer confronted him at the interview, alleging an inconsistency between those statements and something in his written declaration that he had submitted with his application materials. You see, in his declaration, my client had mentioned that he was once hit a few times on the arm with a stick by some border guards who were exercising crowd control and trying to keep back a group of people who were trying to cross the border. Now, it was not a calculated attack on my client per se. It was more like a few random strikes as the guards tried to kind of push people back. And it did not cause any injuries. And really my client said it didn't even hurt. It honestly was not a big deal. So my client did not consider this to be an incident of harm, but the officer did. Because there was an unwanted touching of my client's body, the officer considered it harm. And this was problematic because my client had indicated that he had not been harmed in response to direct questions about past harm. Yet here he was describing an incident in his declaration that the officer considered to be an incident of harm. So it looks like there's an inconsistency in my client's case. And remember, if you have inconsistencies in your case, well, you can be denied. The officer can say, oh, well, there were too many inconsistencies in your case and therefore you're not credible. So 
we don't believe you and you're therefore denied. This happens all the time, including because of misunderstandings like the one in the example I just gave. I mean, it's clear that my client was not trying to lie. He just had a different understanding of the word harm than the officer had. Now, thankfully, I was able to jump in and clear up this misunderstanding during the interview by getting the officer to restate the question and then have my client answer anew such that this episode could not be considered an inconsistency. So my client clarified that by harm, he thought the officer was referring to an attack that caused injury. And this incident in question had not caused injury or even really been a big deal. So he did not think it was the kind of thing that would be considered harm. So thankfully this issue did not end up hurting my client. But many people don't have the benefit of having an asylum lawyer with them during their interview who can intercede and rectify this type of situation. The lesson here is that for purposes of your asylum case, you should take an expansive view of the word harm. Know that the asylum officer understands this word to mean really any unwanted touching of your body, okay? By the way, if you want to maximize your chances for asylum success, then be sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell notification so that you don't miss the insights that I share on this channel. Okay, let's turn now to another word that causes confusion. It's the word threat. What is a threat exactly? Well, going back to the dictionary, it's defined as a statement of an intention to inflict pain, injury, damage, or other hostile action on someone in retribution for something done or not done. With this one, the problem is that the asylum applicant tends to think that something has to be very direct to be a threat, like I'm going to beat you up. But I find that asylum officers often consider language that is much less direct to be threatening. Like anything at all that could indicate a possible desire to eventually do harm to someone. Let me give you an example. If someone says, we think it would be in your best interest to change political parties, well, the asylum officer would probably view that as a threat. I mean, it's definitely not a direct threat, but it is kind of menacing. I mean, it all depends on the context, right? But it does seem like by saying it would be in someone's best interest to do something, you're suggesting that something bad could happen to them if they don't do it. But a reasonable person could think, oh, that's not really a threat. I mean, yeah, I think it could reasonably go either way. So there's a risk here of a perceived inconsistency. The applicant could say, no, I've never been threatened. But the officer could consider this statement to be a threat. And yes, then you've got a problem. So as with the word harm, I encourage you to have an expansive definition of the word threat. Anything that could even remotely indicate that someone may want to do something that could lead to you being harmed should be considered a threat, okay? If you're ready to take the next step and get help with your asylum case, then please call my office today. That number is 713-909-0401. And remember, we help people all over the country, so it doesn't matter where you live. Call us now to schedule an asylum strategy session so that we can help you secure your future in America through asylum. Again, I'm Brian Manning, and it's an honor to support you in your asylum journey.